What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm the Knights of Four, Anthony. George can't be here again, but I got another amazing guest on the podcast today. Uh, you know him from his channel, Awkward Arsic. Mr. Arsic, how you doing today? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I started seeing some of your videos a while back, and I enjoy your content, so I'm glad to be on, man. Oh, man, thank you very much. That means a lot. We, we You know, I enjoy your content a lot, too. I I have your bell notifications on, so I'm one of the first to watch every time you put up a new video. So um, it's just uh, it's an honor to have you on the podcast. Um, so, yeah, let's just let's get let's just dive right in. So we do a couple shout-outs. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to give a shout-out to Mr. Uh, Arsic uh, for being on the podcast and just doing what he does every week because uh, – uh, he puts up amazing content, and uh, I enjoy watching it. It's something that uh, helps me get by my day when they uh, they go up, so it's awesome. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Oh. Arsic. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. And then the second one's going to go to the audience because without them, none of us would be here today. So Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure, man. We uh, This audience, man, they give us uh, great feedback on what we can improve on or uh, what they liked and stuff, so I, I like that a lot. Yeah, and a community that wants uh, Horror Nights news in April. I mean, what can you ask for? You know, we could be posting January, February, and there's th those diehard fans like us that actually support the channels and watch it. So, I mean, the community, dude, freaking amazing. And seeing all the channels grow and post videos, it's pretty, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane, man. I mean, we get a lot of feedback from, from the fans, and it's really cool. Um, yeah. So, we're going to go on for our first topic. I'm just going to do a little... Uh, Q and A. That there's a couple of questions I wanted to ask you. I I, um, I came up with some of these questions uh, this morning, uh, just just because I want to know a little bit about you. What um, you know, just just the basics and stuff. So first and foremost, I just want to know, like, what inspired you uh, to want to start your channel? You know. Shoot. Um, well, there was a podcast, a couple podcasts I was listening to a while back. It's uh, Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights and uh, the Scare Zone podcast. So those two were, you know, posting weekly podcasts and news and things like that. And I was like, oh man, there's people out there just like me that love talking about Horror Nights, and they're doing it. They're doing it on a scale where other people that you know can listen. So I was like, that's pretty cool. And then. I've always been on YouTube for years, but I've never posted anything. So I would always watch channels like Philip DeFranco, SourceFed, a ton of other places that would report on news, that would report on things like that. Tim Tracker as well, right? We all we all know Tim, Tim Tracker, Tracker from yeah. Orlando. Um, and I was like, you know what? Like, I just got a camera for for vacations and just filming, you know, things that my girlfriend and I do. I was like, let me just post, let me post the walkthroughs uh, in HHN 2016. They got, you know, decent views. The opening ceremony got pretty great views. So I was like, all right, you know what? Next year, let me try to let me try to do some speculation. So I posted my first video in February with uh, actually talking about the shitty-ass mummy remake. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, like the potential of it coming to Horror Nights. This is before I knew it was, it was garbage. And, um, and I was like, oh, people are here. You know, people are here in February wanting to watch Horror Nights stuff. So I was like, that's it. It's like all my friends that I geek out over things. Uh, at work and at school and all that kind of stuff. There, I was like, there's more people out there. So I figured, let me let me just keep at it. So I've been doing it for now a little over a year, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, you, you put up amazing content, man. And it's funny that you bring up the, uh, the HHN scare mode because um, every year uh, after I go to Horror Nights, I, you know, I mean, the last couple of years I've only gone one time. And I kind of regret yeah. that I want to go multiple times because I see a lot of people do it and it looks just like fun. Um, mm -hmm. and what sucks about me is I go in like the beginning of like, like the, the opening weekend of the event and then I never go again. And then when Halloween comes, oh, closer, man. when Hall yeah, when Halloween comes closer, I want to go back. So this year I'm going to change that up. Um, but it's channels like you where before when I didn't have, you know, the money or resources to, to go multiple times, it's channels like yours that I can go back and then rewatch a lot of the stuff to get me even pumped for just Halloween in general. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've watched your walkthroughs, your your opening uh, ceremonies, your your vlogs and stuff like that, and it's amazing. You do amazing. Uh, one of the things I've been commenting on lately on your videos is your uh, your infamous uh, fan uh, maze uh, trailers. Those things are just oh yeah, those are phenomenal, <laughs> dude. Um, oh, thanks a lot, man. I mean, I figured like I think 
because the, the weird thing about when I first started doing the videos is I didn't know that there was other people out there doing videos like this. So I kind of just started going in and, and thinking like, oh, what could I bring to this that, you know, I've never seen. So I was like, maze trailers, let me do the Twitter roundup. Let me do, uh, you know, like the horror fix some weekly news, things like that. I didn't, I've seen it, but I haven't seen the maze trailers and things like that. So I was like, you know what? I love editing. Let me just challenge myself and then also see if anybody likes it you know so everybody seems to enjoy it so thank you appreciate it yeah yeah i mean especially those twitter roundups dude because there's some people that are probably not even aware that Halloween horror nights has a twitter account and for guys like uh you know like you to to make a video each month uh rounding up all the tweets you know the most important ones and the ones with the most information about uh the the event and stuff it's like it's it's videos like that that get people wanting to tune in uh more often because um they they just want to know all the info they can and uh and it's it's honestly really helpful because um i i tune in sometimes too and i like to hear other people's inputs on their opinions on what they think so i always uh i always look forward to videos like that when you come out with those because i like to always hear your input on what you think is going to be at the event and stuff and it, it's just really good uh so yeah yeah it, it's it's also crazy like twitter wise um i don't know how how, well, how many years have you been going to the event for now? I've been I've been going since 2011. Okay, for sure. So you've been going for for quite a while now. And like for me to think about John's Twitter and stuff, I mean, we're so lucky, you know, as fans to have. And I I, I always mention this in the video too, but you know, for him to be able or willing to post all these behind the scenes and actually like you go through his Twitter, man, and you actually top of his social media. Like, it's, it's so impressive, and it comes full circle because this was, what, 12, 13, let's see. Well, shoot, in, in 2007, I created a Twitter just because of John Murdy's tweets. Like, I did, like, seeing Halloween Horror Nights be active on Twitter is why I created a Twitter way back in the day. So, it's pretty awesome that we get that. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 just new, there's like, a new social media platform where it's just easier to connect with, you know, fans and stuff, and that's why it makes it, like, a way more fun and just way more cool to like you know you can connect back with them um and stuff like that uh it's funny that you bring up hhn i wanted to know um what what was your favorite year of hhn damn that is um I, i'm gonna probably i flip flop back and forth between two years but i'd say for sure 2007 uh it was my first year that uh, slasher icons are always I think now we've seen Slasher Icon so much, but when I first went, like, those are the movies I grew up with, you know, I was like six, yeah. seven years old, probably shouldn't, you know, most of us watch it when we're, when we're super young, but Jason, Freddy, Leatherface, those are the movies I grew up with, and um, so 2007 was special, and then I would say 2016 as well, man, because we had a freaking amazing lineup, just having, you know, the Titans of Terror again in separate mazes, Freddy vs. Jason, Krampus, um... Even Exorcist, like, at times had, had its moments, but, yeah, 2016 and 2007, for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. I would agree with you on uh, the 2016. I think 2016 was my all-time favorite lineup uh, so far that I've been going. Um, I'm hoping this year we'll maybe beat that out. I thought last year would have done it. It was a really solid lineup last I know. year, but so much black walls, and I just... Uh, I mean, I, I only went through everything one time, so I can't really, like, you know... Mm -hmm. I can't really, like... How do I put it? I can't really judge the mazes good enough because I only went through once. Like, if I would have went through multiple times, I could have had more arguments valid to uh, why I didn't enjoy it as much. But as far my main yeah. argument always is the black walls because I did notice that when, uh, like, you, you actually brought that up in one of your videos. And then I, I started thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, there was a lot of black walls this year. And so, um, yeah, and then I also yeah, it's, heard... It's funny, because I didn't actually notice it, too, like, originally. Uh, TLEV, I think, I saw their video, and they mentioned a ton of black walls, and then I went back, like, the following week, and I was like, oh, shit, like, they're right. I was in a, I was in the honeymoon phase. I didn't see it at first, and, yeah, I, I agree. The black walls were... It was unfortunate last year, man. Yeah, I mean, you can easily put, like, a scare actor or, like, something to tell the story to continue it on, you know, and they, that was kind of just missed opportunities they, 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 they missed out on. Um, yeah, I actually found it funny too. You actually had brought up that you, you used to be a scare actor at Horror Nights, right? Yes, sir. 2012, man. I, I'm sad I only got to do it one year, but it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, if you can, would you do it? Would you do it again? 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Like the only reason that held me back and for any of your listeners and, and for you as well, because um, if you're thinking about being a scare actor uh, or even just thinking about it just a bit, I highly recommend uh, auditioning because I think even the audition process alone, if you don't make it, that's totally cool. You know, what's the worst that they can say? Oh, no, not this year. Right. But um, when I when I did it, I you know, you get to meet some amazing people, everybody there. Or most people there are just as as passionate about the event. They love it. Even if they're actors, they have a fun time. So you guys uh, get to, you know, bond over that. But then the pay is pretty good. I can't say what it is, at, at least at the time. But the pay is pretty good. The the memories you make are great. And then, come on, you want to scare the shit out of people, right? Like, you're getting paid to scare people. So um, the only thing that held me back was the job that I got in 2012. From then till now. Uh, it just it's been it's been full time and I you know they they don't allow me to I I really have no time to spare now. Oh yeah, I I completely understand. I'm I'm in the same boat. Um, well, as of right now, I'm kind of I'm out of work uh, due to my injury, but um, I I'm in the same boat with my full time job. Um, I I probably can pull it off. It's just the Friday nights. I don't think I really could. Um, or the Thursday nights or if they I don't know the schedule they've been doing this year, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I bet I could pull it off if, if I worked something out with them, but they probably would want me all the nights, and I can only do so much. But um, that, that's just cool. And you said you were, uh, what were you, in The Walking Dead, the first year they did it? Yeah, yeah, Walking Dead first year. I was in the, um, you you went through that maze, right? Because you said you started going in 2011? Yeah, and then when they started doing Walking Dead, I was so excited when they uh, when they did it. It was a really good maze. Yeah, it was the, I was in the tank room specifically where the horse was getting eaten by that little horde of zombies. And then I, I would swap out from that room to the uh, to the bicycle girl room. So it would be like right as she's on your right-hand side, I popped out on the left-hand side. So it was a good distraction scare there. Yeah, I mean, that maze was a solid maze. I, was, I remember when they announced it, and I was just so excited because, I mean, The Walking Dead at that time uh, had had blown up. It's, it's still pretty big today, but... Like when it when it first came to Horror Nights, it was just it was just blowing up like crazy, and it was a big thing. And um, I remember like because I had went 2011, and I'd follow the announcements for 2012, and I was just so excited. So I had told my dad, I'm like, Dad, let's get tickets and let's go and stuff. And so uh, he took me and my cousin, and we went and we had a, a, a great time. And um, when you when you had said that you were a scare actor, that actually just you know, I I I was kind of flipping out on that because that's pretty cool. Um, you don't get to meet a lot of YouTubers who actually know what goes on behind the scenes of Horror Nights and uh, keeps it going, you know, and stuff like that. So I, th I thought that was that that was a cool aspect of that uh, part of your channel because you have a little background of working at Horror Nights, and then um, I mean you can always just tell stories about it and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, I think I think any fan, any fan should definitely, especially if you're living here in SoCal, you know, if you have the chance to do it. You'll not only appreciate the event more, but like you said, you get to see the behind the scenes. You get to, of course, meet John Murdy, get uh, get feedback from him. He personally goes into each maze with you guys, with Chris Williams, and they train you. Like they show you exactly what they the, what they want from you, what they expect. Um, so it's a crazy. I mean, and then you get a like. Let's say you get cast into let's say this year, for example, Stranger Things maze. Right, you're gonna probably get an extra day where you're filming just where you scare the cast from Stranger Things, right? So 2012, um, the cast of Walking Dead, you know, this, like you said, was when it was super big and it's still popular, not not to the level it was now, but we got to scare the entire cast. I saw Norman Reedus, Andrew Lincoln, everybody, like everybody from the show. And uh, I remember the Talking Dead, you know, you know how they would play that right after the episode every week? Yeah, with uh, Chris Hardwick. Yeah, so they they posted a little segment on the maze, and a couple of my friends text me, and they're like, "Hey, is that you?" So they actually got me on camera, and I showed up for like two seconds. So technically, I'm like a Walking Dead star now, I guess. You know, there you go, man. I mean, two <laughs> seconds is better dude. than nothing. You know, I mean, gotta gotta get the big bucks now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna wrap up this Q and A right here uh, with this last question. Um. You make a lot of really amazing content. Uh, I can't stress that enough. And uh, I just want to know, like, uh, what's your favorite part about making content? Uh, well, first off, I don't know if it's amazing. It's kind of it's kind of garbage, but you know, whatever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, I would say, for sure, seeing one of the things would be just seeing the growth um, 
on your end, you know, you start like looking back at your first video and then just continuously trying to challenge yourself and, and make your content, you know, better for yourself, but just better for everybody else out there listening. So, and, and watching your content. So I, I mean, looking back at my February video of 2017, you know, I was so scared to talk in front of the camera. I still, I still get a little tongue tied at times, but I was scared of that. My quality wasn't the best you know improving your lighting the editing and i think that's one of my favorite things is just seeing myself grow as as a creator and then this i think the second thing and i, I think you could agree as well is just the uh the community interaction you know going back and forth talking with fellow hhn addicts that are just uh ju just as in love with the event as you are and just going back and forth and being like damn like there's there's some crazy ass horror fans out there that are just like you, you know. So yeah, I think those it, are my two favorite things. That's probably the best part too is when I get comments like, "Oh, well, they, uh, you know, the maze is probably going to be here and stuff like that." When they comment stuff like extra details that you either forgot, uh, you didn't hear about or something, it always it's always cool to like communicate with the the fans and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, yeah I, and getting I, corrected, man. Like you know, getting corrected uh, at times too, where I'm like, shit, I'm the one that's been going for 12, 12 years now, or however long. And there's people out there that are that are on top of it, just like you. I was like, oh man, like thanks for the correction. I didn't even catch that, you know? Yeah, I mean, and and I look at that as like, okay, that's something I can I can uh, mental note myself for next time, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's good to put all those like uh, features into the next video, so you know you're getting better feedback and it makes your, your quality of content better and stuff like that. And, um, you know, you just kind of, you keep going from there. And, and that's the thing I like about the fans is like, like you said, uh, there's, there's dire, there's those diehard fans as, uh, we are even probably even bigger than us. And, uh, they enjoy watching to see what our opinions are and, um, just seeing what content we, we bring out each and every week. And, uh, it's really awesome, man. Uh, you yourself have grown, uh, quite a little community of people, and it keeps growing, man. You just hit four thousand, and and congratulations on that, by the way. Uh, Thanks, man. I mean, that's that's cr like for me, I can't believe it. Like four thousand, I know on on other YouTube channel standards, like you know, out there beyond horror is like nothing, right? But four thousand people that are just just like me, just like you, um, I'm I'm honored by it. Like it's, I don't even know how it happened. You know, it just happened pre pretty quick. So for for me, I wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah, you you do you just grew, man, and, and it, you know it takes time to get up there, but you're get you're you're climbing your way to the top. Next is to five thousand, then to ten thousand, hundred thousand, million. You know, it's just gonna keep going, keep growing as you go on. You know, you're you're gonna get new viewers to come in, uh, people who want are as interested as as you know, uh, like you know, people like you and me and stuff, and they just wanna they wanna hear what other voices are out there, what opinions people have. You know, like I said, there's not a lot of people that know about the whole Twitter thing, so. For you doing your show about the Twitter roundup, it gets people an aspect like, oh, maybe I should go follow John Murdy on Twitter so I can get all this amazing info, and then uh, I can come back to Awkward Arsic, and then he can break it down for me and stuff like that. So um, yeah, man, and and you know, like you you keep shooting me compliments, but I have to say uh, for you too, like keep up the good work, man, because I I would say at the start of at the start of everything, you know, when you're very very early on starting and it's a smaller smaller reception right not as many people watching and you, you keep that consistency up i think that always takes um that always takes commitment you know because at first you're like damn there's not that many people out there when i first started you know there's not a ton of viewers so you got to keep that up but i i really like you know you doing this podcast is awesome i don't see a ton of horror podcasts going on so when i saw you doing this i was like that's awesome when, and when you asked me originally i was a little even even now, I'm always nervous when people ask me like, "Hey, do you want to be on this or do you want to be that?" Because I told you, I was like, "Man, I'm awkward. I don't know if you want to really, really uh, talk with me." Because I'm, I just I'm weird, dude. I'm super weird. But yeah, keep up the good work. And for anybody else out there, I've had a ton of people ask me questions like, "Hey, should I start my own channel? Should I do any of this?" Look, if you feel like you have a voice, if you have something to bring. And you want to talk about it, then do it. If if you're passionate about it, people will recognize that. And if you have that voice, then they're gonna start watching your stuff. And like I said, don't go for just the viewers. If you enjoy doing it, you're gonna put hours into this and not get anything out of it at the start. But at the end of at the end of the day, it, it'll be rewarding. And once you start getting people to follow you, then you're good to go. Yeah, so. it pays off. And I, like you said, like yeah, like right now. I mean, I know I'm I'm pretty small right now, but. Honestly, like for everything that like viewership and 
and subscribers. I'm like super thankful because like I I, I remember like, like last Halloween Horror Nights I put up a, a top ten uh, facade video and within that mm -hmm. like, and within that like like first couple of days it just kind of like went out and blew up. Uh, you know, it, like I think that the first like three or four days it got like two or three thousand uh, views or something like that. Nice man, and, nice, like, nice, yeah. It was just blowing up, and I was like, I was flipping out because I've never made content that gotten that much views, and 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 even now, like even when I look at like even like my my smaller stuff that's like thirty, seventy views, I'm like, all right, you know, I, at least people are watching it. That's what that's how I always think of it. I always think of a positive side. I never try to think negative when I make my content. Because uh, absolutely, that yeah, puts me down, you know, and I don't want to be put down uh, doing what I love doing. So definitely, even think about it, like yeah, like you said, in a positive way. When you put it into perspective, you have thirty people watching. Let's say you have a podcast for an hour. Just think about how how much people are putting in to just like listen to you, right? Like they're like, oh, I really care about this guy's opinion on this news on this Halloween Horror Nights update. Like thirty people may not sound like a lot, but I, I think like anything, anything is great, especially when it's just how positive our community is. It's like, I'll, shoot, I haven't seen any real negativity for the most part. So I've heard there was drama in the past years with like speculation and stuff. And I was like, look, drama's not for me. So if that, if that shit goes on, I'm out, you know? So, um, but yeah, it's great, man. So keep it up. For yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, you are honestly, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers out there right now and stuff. So. Um, I just appreciate you for putting out all that content. Um, so I'm going to move on right here because I want to talk to you about something that just got announced this week. Um, Halloween Horror Nights. They just announced Stranger Things, man. Um, are you excited about this or how do you how are you feeling about this right now? Dude, I mean, this is – I actually called it. I don't know if you saw my tweet, but I called this a month ago. On uh, I, I put that Stranger Things um, – maze trailer together and then on my instagram i posted it and i'm like i'm calling it now this is gonna be the first announcement and it's it's not because i had obviously we all kind of know the leaked lineup right or the rumored lineup yeah. what it is but but this is such a huge announcement for for the event overall i think this is gonna this is gonna bring people in the way that it brought me in in 2007 right like i saw slasher icons get announced i was terrified of going to like a live halloween event uh, i was 12 years old that's i think at the time 12 years old so um i was like damn and now now imagine there's gonna be 12 year olds out there i know that's a con some people out there are gonna be like fuck i don't yeah. i don't want like young kids coming right but there's you know the audience nowadays is is there's going to be 30 year olds out there that are just as annoying as the 12 year olds. So I think it's going to be great just to bring in like a new, a new like era of people to come to Horror Nights. This is going to be one of those like four hour plus wait times. It's, uh, which is sucks, but, um, I think it's going to, I'm, I'm so excited. How about you, man? Oh, dude, I am, I am so looking forward to this, uh, maze. Uh, I, I, I talked with the league about this, um, on the, on the last podcast and we talked about, Mm -hmm. what can possibly be some good facades if they were to bring this you know this was before they even announced it and we were talking about the leak lineup but we were talking about um what facades they can possibly bring to it if it were to come and now it's here um and i just want to know uh because i don't know I, I know orlando came out with a bunch of information of it's going to be focused on season one you're going to see like a lot of things uh you know and all that and I don't know if if Murdy's doing season one though because I know Murdy is he said that he's gonna try to keep uh, this a secret for a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and I'm curious to see of what what seasons he's gonna do if he's gonna do season one, uh, if he's gonna do both seasons. Um, but if he decides to do uh, it doesn't matter what season, but if he decides to make a a really good facade, my dream facade for this would be uh, honestly the upside down version of the school. Uh, and it's filled oh, with all, dude. Those, all those black, uh, like you know, like vines and stuff like that. And if if you put the right lighting on it and stuff, it would look so cool and stuff. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I I love that idea actually because it it kind of reminds me too of um, I would I'll, I'll go back to kind of feel like it's like a Nightmare on Elm Street. Like I don't know, like just that type of facade where it's. I don't know, man. I'm thinking, yeah, the school would be great, and that because I know, of course, that's season two. Most of the maze itself, I think, even if it was based on season one, wouldn't change much with because you see the same setting, you know, in both seasons, yeah. with the exception of the honestly, with the exception of the school, the maze would be similar and there'd be no demi dogs. But uh, 
I don't know, man. That school idea, I think, would be great. If, if it wasn't for the school, I would probably say I would like maybe the uh, the Hawkins, like I mentioned in my video, the Hawkins, or uh, what is it? The government facility? Yeah. Um, be just cool. because then you could start out start out there, see the those government agents and those people in the hazmat suits. So you can kind of get a couple scares with that before jumping right into the Demigorgon. Because um, pacing for me is a big thing. It's like I don't want to go into the first room and automatically get scared by Demigorgon because I think that buildup with Stranger Things, it, it has that, you know, mysterious tone, that atmosphere. And if you walk in and you just hear that amazing score, that theme song, and you're just like, like, I just get goosebumps. I already know it. Like, I'm going to get so hyped up when I first go into that movie. Oh, yeah, like, dude. I, I, the only thing I, 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 I don't want um, for Stranger Things is uh, the problem they had last year, which is the Black Walls. Um, uh, I know, and, and rumor has it, and, and last year I know uh, that was one of the main areas of opportunity, and I know it was budget, like it's so it's not technically like the creative team's fault, but it yeah. does, it's still at the same time, it's like, alright, well if you're putting out an event, you're charging, let's say $80, right, then the event should be top notch, but rumor has it this year, the budget has been up significantly, so we'll actually see, I would say, fingers crossed, but no black walls, or very, very little of it. Yeah, I mean, um, even then, though, last year, like, I know a lot of people, that was a lot of people's, um, kind of, um, you know, a lot of people said that. I kind of still enjoyed myself last year, um, regardless. I mean, like I said, I only went the one time, so I can't really express an, a bigger opinion on this matter, but, um, I still enjoyed myself. Um, I would say the only maids I didn't enjoy, and that's because, like, um, we had it kind of repeatedly. Um, the first two were great, but this one, because it was a, it was a walking trailer, I didn't enjoy it as much, was Insidious. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, now after watching the movie, like, I understood it more. And then, uh, but other than that, for me, like, a lot of people didn't like The Shining, and I really enjoyed The Shining. But then again, I didn't go into it enough times to actually voice an opinion on stuff. I think the only problem I did have which a lot of people had were a lot of the, the projections that they use and they, more opportunities of <laughs> like a, a scare actor and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I would say Shining too. Shining was probably my favorite, even though there was like some of those things that kind of were like iffy, you know, the the blood elevator scene for me was a little anticlimactic a little bit. Uh, the ending too, right, you had the uh, the hedge maze, but there was no hedges. Like you said, it was just black, black walls in that too. Yeah. Uh, but I did enjoy that a lot. I like that. I I mean, for me, same same as you. Even if it's not the best year, I have a great time. We actually, <laughs> me and uh, me and my girlfriend, we went nine times last year. Nice. So, dude, you got to get the proof of your past this year. Especially I know now with your channel and you're and you're doing your podcast and all your updates. Like, if you get to go, as a, there would be times where we go for like two hours, just go through a couple mazes during early entry, spend some time in Halloween meet some of the fans and, and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, last year was probably my favorite years in terms of experience. Not not the mazes themselves, but just get, being able to meet everybody and go through everything so many times. Like, I've never been that many that many times in a single year. Yeah, I mean, um, that's what I want to do. Because I know I, I have also uh, the Platinum Universal Pass, so I get a free ticket on top of that. Oh, nice. So nice. Just a free, uh, yeah, general mission. And that's actually the only reason why I bought... Well, that's one of the reasons I bought the the Platinum Universal Pass. The other reason is because I get front of the line and free parking. Um, so uh, that that pass is well worth the investment. Plus, they do monthly payments now, so I just do that. Um, Definitely, yeah. But I have to say, because uh, usually me and my cousin every year, in the beginning of the year, uh, or beginning of HHN every year, uh, we always get the front of the line pass because we like to... Uh, um, one, take our time, and we started doing the front of the line pass like two years ago. But we like mm -hmm. to one, take our time, and and two, we just kind of like to enjoy everything. We don't want to feel rushed or anything. So, um, I know last year we got everything done by like midnight, and uh, we just we were like, oh, you guys want to head out? We're we're pretty much done. You want to just like leave? And so we left. Uh, we even stuck around a little bit to look at all the like the red carpet stars come in, and we saw like a lot of uh, cast members come in. We saw like the whole cast of uh, Happy Death Day. Um, oh, nice. We saw uh, Frank Grillo from uh, Purge and, and Captain America Civil War. Um, 
who else did we see? We saw Vanessa Hudgens. We saw uh, Lance Stewart. Uh, we saw a lot of Damn, people. Damn, dude. You ran into a lot of people. Yeah, and uh, we got to – and I, 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 yeah, I took a picture with Jason Blum. That was really cool. He was he was a super cool guy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was just Jason cool. Street. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons why we like getting in front of the line because we like uh, – last year was the first year we actually ever went on opening night, um, and that was really fun. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off this year because of uh, work purposes, but um, we're going to try to at least go opening weekend. I think that Saturday we're going to try to go. So um. Yeah, and if you haven't, if, if and, and for your listeners and you as well, if you guys have never done um, VIP as well, it is it is pricey, but if you have the chance to spoil, spoil yourself at least once, definitely check it out because I, I used to – uh, shout out to uh, my my good friend, Mr. Fifth, or as you guys may know, the the person I would do some of the HHN Addicts videos with. Um, he actually got me, he got the hookup and he ended up getting the VIP way back like in 2011 and 2012. But dude, you get unlimited food at a buffet, you get some, some drinks, you get to do that uh, behind the scenes tour um, on the back lot. A lot of great stuff, and then you get unlimited front of the line. So we got to go through mazes like five, six, seven times per maze. So if you guys ever get the chance to do it, definitely invest in it. It's totally worth it, at least one year. Yeah, I, I wanted to do that last year because I had heard of the unlimited front of the line. And I was like, oh, that gives me an opportunity to walk through mazes multiple times, and I get to actually uh, judge it and stuff like that. Um, and I know last year was the first year because last year I, I launched the channel, and then last year was actually the first year I ever filmed at – at Horror Nights, so I, this year uh, I want to try to invest in it like a way better, high quality, like pretty expensive camera, and and bring it down and 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 shoot some good quality videos and stuff. Meet up with some YouTubers, uh, do some collaborations, yeah. and that's another reason why I want to go multiple years because I see a lot of the YouTubers do it, and like we can meet up and like do some collaborations if they feel they want it or something like that, and uh, just just have fun with it, you know. And and I know last year uh, you and TLEV did a the scare. Uh, whoever gets scared in the maze kind of uh, competition, and that was pretty cool to watch. Um, yeah, that was a genius idea on uh, on Thomas and Josue's part. They actually they brought that up, and I was like, "Damn, like we got to take this challenge." So that was really cool on their part. But we we ran into them. Funny enough, I think on one one of my vlogs, uh, I was filming something randomly. We see them, so we kind of captured or I recorded that first interaction, just randomly running into the running into them. So. Um, but yeah, those guys, those guys are really fun to collaborate with and, uh, do some videos with. So it'll be fun this year, especially with you and some other channels I see coming up and, and the league and, and all that. I, I think it's going to be blast. We should have this giant, uh, giant meetup and all that kind of stuff. So oh, dude, I am way down for that, man. I, I am. Oh my God. Like well, we have to set it up. Yeah. When it, when the time, when the event comes around, we have to set it up for us to all go on a day and stuff like that. I know that opening weekend we're all going to be all trying to get our, our footage for all the mazes and stuff like that, so we'll all be busy. But for sure, since I'm going multiple times this year, we'll plan a day out where we all just meet up and, and have a good time and something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, like, I, I'm excited for Stranger Things to come. I mean, I, I've been a fan of the show. I mean, I got into it pretty late. Everybody kept telling me to watch it, and I kept kind of holding it off. And then finally, I, I just sat down and watched it. Then I brought it to my dad's attention, and... And he got all into it because we're all into sci-fi and stuff like that. And um, when they announced that it was coming to Horror Nights, I, I was beyond excited. The trailer itself was just amazing. How it showed oh, dude. the bike and then it flipped over and then it's still the bike and then it's the upside down version of Universal Studios. I thought that was very well put together. Um, and that was just, it, it gave me goosebumps watching it pretty much. Same here, man. Best announcement trailer, probably the best Horror Nights video i've seen them ever do and it was so simple like my favorite commercial and this is like gone way back but favorite commercial was back in 2007 where they had uh jack the clown and this guy goes into the tent i don't know if you've seen seen the yes. commercial but he's like Love that commercial. what's my future yeah and he's like oh you don't have one and then jason leatherface freddy pop out and i was like shit that's dope you know and now what freaking 11 years down the line this is like my next favorite thing because it was so effective like Props to whoever marketing and and whoever came up with that idea was fantastic idea. Yeah, I mean, I I I remember just watching it and then you hear the theme song in the background. I'm just like, oh my god, this is gonna be a badass maze, man! And I'm just excited to see. They have not announced though where it's gonna be at yet, though, right? They haven't told us 
Wait. No, yeah, he didn't give any details. I know rumor has it right now it's going to be the Water World queue. Um, so that'd be it. For me, that's a good venue. I think, honestly, most venues now, even Parisian Courtyard, I feel like they've been able to really uh, put together like a pretty decent flow for a maze. I know at the beginning it was a little clunky at the start because, you know, that uh, that really dark hallway for a good while. I don't know. It was like a very weird portion of the start of the maze. But now I think Waterworld's a pretty good venue. It's pretty big. Uh, Titans of Terror last year I think was felt long enough. So I'm excited if it goes there. That's cool with me. Yeah, and, I, and then I, I want to say uh, one of the locations, because I know he said we're losing one and then we're gaining one. Um, I want to say we're gonna get back the uh, the Shrek line queue because I know they're putting the uh, the uh, DreamWorks Theater there, so I want to say hopefully we might be getting that queue back because where La Llorona was uh, that year that was such a good spot for that maze and it was like really big, really long and stuff like that and so I hope that we get that queue back. Um, yeah, I think that's a I think that's a solid guess for sure because I, I, the only thing. Only other venue I could think maybe coming back if it wasn't there is uh because that's coming in what uh, summer right they said yeah it's opening up I think in like June or July so yeah so if if it doesn't go there I would think maybe in um back where House of a Thousand Corpses was where the um where Terminator was before yeah. and all that so because because I know we had that venue for a little bit then it went away because it's super silly and I don't know if there's enough space on the side anymore but. If there is, I think that'd be a good spot because then we get another uh, scare zone again in uh, in Baker Street because we didn't see that last year. So yeah, uh, they had that all blocked off too, and um, yeah, I mean, I like I love that place for because uh, I yeah I went there for House of a Thousand Corpses. That was an amazing maze. Uh, yeah. Last year they did uh, Alice Cooper's Go to Hell. Uh, that was a really good maze, and I think after Alice Cooper, that was it. Like I don't think they did I... that spot no more. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think 2012, that was uh, Welcome, or Goes, Goes to Hell, and I think it after that, yeah, it was done. Yeah, um, but nonetheless, I think Stranger Things is going to be a phenomenal maze, uh, hopefully this year. Uh, hopefully they bring a lot of the aspects from the show um, uh, into the mazes and bring it, bring our nightmares to life. Uh, it's going to be a kind of a challenge to bring this one a little bit alive, though, because a lot of which is focused mostly on Eleven. Um, you do, uh, I, I think you brought up the fact that yeah, there is Demogorgons, but you can only do so much with that, and uh, the government people as well, you can only do so much with them, but I think uh, J John Murdy's taken on the challenge before, and I think he can make this uh, a possibility. Uh, he, when he announced it, he seemed to be really excited for it to be coming, uh, and that always gets me excited too, because if someone is as passionate about um, a project coming to Horror Nights, uh, and if, any, if it's anyone, it's him. Uh, then by all means, he, he I think he'll do a phenomenal job. Absolutely, especially with uh, both both coasts, because Mike Aiello I know mentioned like on his tweets back and forth with John, he's like, oh yeah, I'm the one that <laughs> had to bug John for quite a while to watch the show. So for them to both be passionate about it, like it's gonna be exciting. I can't wait to compare Orlando's and Hollywood's and uh, and with the kids, yeah, it's gonna be hard to do without Demi Gorgons and, and just those two types of characters. I'm. I don't know how they're gonna go about it because it, somebody actually brought it up, and one of the one of my subscribers actually brought up a good point where it's like if Murdy could bring up. Oh, he was talking, he was talking about classic monsters, I believe. But I think the same applies here. It's like if they can make, um, if they can make the Shining characters and they can make Jack Torrance scary, just a man with an axe, then I think they can make Stranger Things scary for anybody that's kind of concerned or worried about it. So, um, I think the same applies for that. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it should be a good year. Uh, we got more announcements coming out soon, so look out for uh, my channel and Aqua R6 channel. I mean, Aqua R6 does great breakdowns of uh, the tweets and everything. So uh, look forward to seeing uh, some future uh, announcement videos coming soon to our channels. When they announce them, we'll we'll get right on it for you guys. So uh, now we're gonna move on to a little bit of bad acting. We we come across horror movies, uh, and and you know, of course, uh, that don't have such good acting most of the time. Um, <laughs> But I think it's with that, it makes it such a ironic uh, cult classic or just a, a good horror movie because of that bad acting. Um, this week I chose one from uh, Evil Dead. Um, there's this one scene, uh, I'll play it on the screen for the audience and then I'll just explain it to us. But there's this one scene in Evil Dead um, in the very beginning, the original Evil Dead with, uh, of course, the, the amazing Bruce Campbell. Um, 
there's a there's a scene in there where they're driving up to the cabin and uh, Bruce Campbell's reading the map. Uh, and then they almost hit this like red truck, but then they pull out of the way and the steering wheel goes all haywire because it gets like possessed by evil. And uh, there's this one part uh, in that in that exact scene where I, I don't know who's sitting in the front. It's some it's one of the girls. She's sitting in the front, and for like I think like a first like like a split second or like two seconds, you see her real quick. She has her hands in the air and she does like this funny scream. I honestly like <laughs> watching this movie the other night. I, I I noticed that and I was like, that is the worst scream I've ever seen in a horror movie, ever. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's this week's uh, bad horror movie acting. I'm gonna play it on the screen right now. <laughs> And yeah, that was it right there. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it, it's just horrible. Um, Brian, I'll, or, uh, uh, yeah, I'll send it to you later, um, so you can check it out. It, it's it's bad. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually rewatching it right now as we speak because I uh, I actually Evil Dead. As I'm sure most of you guys know, I keep I talk about it on my channel all the time because that's it, one of my favorite. Evil Dead Two is one of my favorite horror films of all time. So I haven't actually, I don't rewatch Evil Dead 1 as much just because part two is basically the better version and the more comedic version of the first one. Um, but yeah, dude, that's that's pretty hilarious, actually. The <laughs> I just, it's a random shot, too, where she puts her hands up and she just screams. screams very yeah. weird. It's, it's like, it's horrible to me. Like, I, I was watching <laughs> the first one the other night because I just bought it on a, on a, on, on digital. And yeah. I, I was just watching it, and I noticed that part. I'm like, what was the point of that? There was no point of that shot, dude. So that that It makes me like, oh, dude, I can't even get over it now that I, I forgot about that shot. But um, it kind of gets me worried when I see bad um, – any bad clip or anything bad in a horror, in a horror movie because I'm actually writing a script right now for a short horror film, and it will be coming out hopefully by the fall of this year. So I'm just like, damn, I hope there's not a moment that's bad like that in my in my little movie. So, um, yeah, there's but a, that's hilarious. There's another fun fact about Mr. Awkward Arsic. He's a screenwriter. No, I'm a shitty, I'm a shitty writer that doesn't know what they're doing, but I made that, that goal of doing one short horror film this year, and then next year it's uh, my plan is to do four. So one every, one every four months. Yeah, so, I got a... I got like a little uh, a little series I want to do that I already finished up the first season of, and I'm writing a a little like fan. I, I watched the uh, the remake of Fright Night the other night, and I, I got some inspiration to to write a movie that's like inspiration off that. So I'm I'm writing that right now. Um, I just I, uh, keep, yeah, I just like, love writing. Doing. Writing just it's it's a, it's a stress reliever. It gets me off, gets a lot of stuff off my head. I, I blast my metal or my punk music, and then I'll just write. Shit, man. Maybe I can have you uh, help me write my because I hate writing. That's like probably my least favorite aspect of it. I like coming up with the idea. For me, directing and and being behind the camera and uh, and editing are my two favorite things. But I I really need a lot of work with writing. So I give credit to everybody that that actually can go out there and write scripts and and all that. I mean, props to, props to you guys. Yeah, I mean, I I I I, uh, I always write first cuts and then I like to have people uh, read it and then tell me what I can improve on and then I'll write second cuts, third cuts, whatever it needs just to improve on what it is. So I always look forward to feedback. But yeah, man, if you ever want to do something on that, I'm always down. I'm always here. <laughs> nice, man. For sure. Uh, well, yeah, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so moving on, uh, I don't know if you've been following, and I always like when we get to mix uh, comic books with horror, but uh, New Mutants, It's uh, it's been really a big cluster lately. It was supposed to come out in February, um, it tested really well with audiences. It tested as well as Deadpool did, uh, the second one, which tested really good with uh, with uh, audiences. Um, but yet they decided, no, it's not scary enough. It's not the reaction that we wanted, so we're going to go back and reshoot the entire movie uh, on its own. It got pushed back to yeah. originally uh, next February. And, and then now, it got pushed again to, when is it, um... My God, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I follow all this stuff. I'm a huge, just movie buff, movie movie nerd in general, especially comics. So not comics themselves, but the comic book movies. So I was so excited when I saw that trailer that they cut together for you know the straight up horror movie superhero trailer. I was like, holy shit, that's 
amazing. And I was going into some of the, the reports as well and just kind of trying to delve deeper into it. And I guess they were saying that they were setting out to make a straight horror movie. And then, like you said, they, they found out it wasn't scary enough. But the main reason why is because when it came out and it was a huge success, there was kids in it and they went, you know, all out and they're like, damn, if they could go all out with kids, with kids in it, then let's redo it and actually try to push the boundaries and, and push the limits on this. So I give credit to Fox. I mean, I give credit. And at the same time, it's like, you guys should have, you shouldn't be changing it based off of another movie's success. So that always yeah. worries me. But at the same time, it's like if you guys know you want to go for that, I, I respect that they're going to not just release like a half-baked movie. So it's kind of like a 50-50. Like you should have known that. So this isn't your original vision. But if you're changing it, at least you're putting the money. Because they're going to be spending another probably 40. I think the budget was $80 million originally. They're going to probably spend another $40 million reshooting. So if they're putting that money into it, then I'm sure they have confidence in that. So. Yeah, my, I don't know. My whole thing about it, though, um, another another thing, a bit of news that I found out this week was was kind of uh, disappointing as well. Um, but we'll see. Uh, John Hamm was supposed to be introduced as Mister Sinister in this movie, and Antonio Banderas is replacing him in the reshoots. So, my, oh, that's my, terrible. I was yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, and I, my whole thing about this whole reshoot process is now. They already shot one version of the movie. Now they're going to go back and reshoot the whole version. And my whole thing is like, well, we're never going to get to see that one version of the movie, which when we saw the trailer looked very, very good and very, uh, you know, had a lot of horror aspects in it. And it looks like um, they're doing a lot of 80s references and stuff. This looks like it's supposed to be taking place in the 80s and stuff. And um, to, to go back and reshoot the entire movie, I just feel that, well, I want to see the first cut of what you guys thought wasn't scary enough compared to what we're going to be getting in next August. Um, I, I just yeah, don't know. I mean, well, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Go, go for it, man. No, that, that's it. I, I, I just don't know. Yeah, I mean, this one has me so... Because I'm, I'm excited, man. Like, I want this to do well. Because just imagine, you know how, like, The Walking Dead, right, back in 20, 2011 or whatever, when the, when the show first came out, it was a huge hit. When when something in, in, in Hollywood is a big hit, then we get more of it, right? So that's when we started seeing great horror shows like, you know, American Horror Story came around. We had uh, Hannibal Show, which unfortunately didn't last as long as it did. Uh, Supernatural's continuing its, its show, which I know we're going to talk about a bit later, uh, 14, 15 seasons in. Yeah. So when, like, uh, when a Marvel or a superhero movie that's going to be horror-based, if it does well... That means we're going to see more horror in in mainstream films, and and it's been great for horror these past couple of years with A twenty four and all their indie films and Blumhouse, who's a genius. So I I just have my fingers crossed, and and I'm hoping there's rumors. If, I don't know if you listen to Collider Heroes, but it's another podcast that I love listening to, um, where they're adding one specific character, and I don't know if it's the one you're talking about with with Banderas or or John John Hamm's original character, but that one specific character is supposed to bring that fear level to like a whole new level. I guess it's one specific character that's going to be that big bad in the whole film. I actually, uh, I, I, yeah, I read about that. I don't know if that would be Mr. Sinister. It might though, because Mr. Sinister has the ability to mess with people's minds to, to think that, you know, something like that can happen. Um, but I have no idea yet. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, but I am I am looking forward to seeing what they do add. I heard, yeah, because I had I had read that too that they're gonna add a new mutant in the uh, in the in the movie. Um, they were bringing in someone else and stuff like that. Um, I'm just curious as to who because there's so many mutants. A lot of people because I know that at, for a while they said that that uh, the mutant Kitty I think her name's Kitty Pride or Kitty I don't remember her name. Uh, mm -hmm. She was supposed to be getting her own horror movie, and so I was talking to my cousin about this. Maybe that's how they're going to introduce her into uh, the X Men universe with the horror aspect, and then later on give her her own horror movie based off New Mutants. Um, so I'm just curious to see uh, what's going to happen with this film because I mean it looked really good when they uh, announced the trailer back in like I think it was like October or November, uh, and then they said they were pushing it back to like almost next you know a whole year. And then now they're pushing it back to August 2019. So, um, I don't know, man. I, I just think Fox needs to get their stuff together with Marvel because <laughs> the cinematic Fox universe for Marvel uh, got, you know, they got their plans all the way till the next 10 years. And 
Yeah, yeah. But Fox and uh, Warner Brothers don't know the fuck. They don't have a fucking clue about DC or Fox. I mean, they they did some great X Men films, like uh, the the not the Last Stand. The Last Stand is like the worst one. Um, <laughs> for First Class and and uh, Days of Future Past, I thought were were really good. So one of my uh, some of my favorites. But another thing too to add to that, and like we were talking about writing a little while ago. The writers for this film actually give me hope too. If they if they stick stick to it and they stay on board, but you have the disaster artist writers and the conjuring writers, and both of those films have great character moments and and I think that's important in a horror film, right? If you don't care about those characters, then who gives a shit about the horror? So um, so fingers crossed. If they stick around and you know they get better and Fox gets their shit together, like you mentioned, then. Maybe we have you know a horror masterpiece. You know that'd be crazy. Yeah, I mean that. Like you said, that would introduce some more uh, horror aspect into comic books, which uh, there's a lot of of horror uh, stuff that they can bring into um, w- w- that will open doors. I mean that that's what Deadpool did with the R-rated comic book universes. They open doors to more R-rated comic book movies. Uh, even Marvel now is considering since now. I know there's like a whole thing right now uh, where they're trying to still strike that deal with Fox. I know that it's on hold right now because I thought they did buy it out and they were everything was good, but now it's on hold or something like that. But um, I know the Marvel uh, one of the Marvel CEOs came out and said like Deadpool is an opportunity for us to make more of an R-rated universe as well. So we'll, we're actually definitely going to look into that. Um, and and with New Mutants, it's more of an opportunity to bring more R-rated. Um, scariness into the uh into the marvel universe as well because they can easily bring in like a ghost rider one or like a, a blade one you know later on down the future which are like very scary characters um uh if you if you make them right and stuff so um only time will tell i mean i guess we can only uh just wait at this point now so yeah definitely but i'm excited I'm excited yeah. for sure should be good uh next thing we're gonna talk about one of the movies i'm very much looking forward to because it's my uh my boy rob zombie three from hell man we've gotten a lot of casting news lately from that um most recently danny Trejo just joined the cast so he's i think he's gonna be yeah. reprising his role uh um, rondo yeah <laughs> gonna be uh, the Mr. bounty hunter good old bounty hunter yeah Mr. Uh, El Super Bisto himself uh, joined the <laughs> the cast. Uh, let me get his name real quick. Uh, let me see. Uh, Tom Papa, that's his name. He joined yeah, the cast. Um, I have not. I have yet to seen Rob Zombie's um, El Super Bisto. I heard it's uh, pretty funny though, and it has an aspect of all of his uh, all of his uh, pretty much movies put together. Uh, they all come out in there, so that that should be cool. Um, yeah, I haven't seen I haven't seen a couple of his, so I haven't seen that, and I haven't seen. Um, did Thirty One ever come out, or is that still in the works? Thirty One's out. That was actually pretty good. Okay, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Um, El Super Bisto, and then he did. Uh, I haven't seen honestly. Uh, this is gonna sound bad, but um, after Halloween that he did, I, it's okay if you know people like it. I totally get it. I I didn't like his take on it i think uh, halloween's a special franchise and i'm excited for blumhouse's uh, movie but i didn't like what he did so i kind of stopped watching some of his movies but i do love thousand uh, house of a thousand corpses and devil's reject so this movie actually gets me hyped up so I'm, I'm gonna actually check that out for sure um but i will agree with you on the on this for me i didn't like the second halloween because it was too dark and not because it was dark like oh my god this is gory like it was dark because i couldn't see the fucking movie <laughs> like it was just too dark <laughs> yeah um, but i agree with that too yeah the first one i did enjoy because what they what he did was yeah it was a remake but he also added some aspects where it told it told more of a backstory on michael myers which i did like a lot it, it showed more of his troubled youth and uh him growing up to be a, a a psychopath killer um so i did enjoy that aspect of the movie um and 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 the first one was it was pretty good in my opinion. It, it was a really good casting choice as far as that movie goes. Um, but yeah, I didn't really like the second one. But um, three from hell, yeah, I am I am super hyped for it because I I'm curious to see how the Devil's Rejects lived from a Blaze of Glory shootout at the end of Devil's Rejects. I I I I still I even went back and watched that movie and watched where they got shot at and stuff like that and they got shot pretty good like to the point where that can actually kill someone like there was rifles there was shotguns there was pistols all being shot at them so i'm, I'm just curious to see how they're going to be alive in this movie um 
I forgot they ended it like that. They legit ended it during like they didn't even show the results of the shootout, right? Uh, no, they literally they sh they play Freebird, which was honestly one of the best movie endings in my <laughs> yeah, opinion. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Um, and then they they hit the gas, and then they get in the shootout. You see them get shot and stuff, and then uh, I think I'm trying to remember. I think you hear a car crash, but it goes black, and you don't see anything. So you don't know, oh, you technically actually don't know if they died or not. Um, I I think a lot of people always just assume just how many times they got shot and the way it looked. Like, oh yeah, those guys are not coming out of that alive. Um, they literally went through hell, all of Devil's Rejects, when they got tortured at the end and stuff like that. And then they get in that shootout and you're like, that that has to be it for them. But I, apparently not because they're back and, and I'm just excited to see yeah, what, like, what chaos they're You know what, now. but... Actually, with this, I'm thinking about, like, if this movie turns out to be pretty good, this this is going to be a, a, a very solid trilogy. But uh, what do you think about this idea? And it might be – I always tell uh, – I tell my girlfriend this all the time because I come up with, like, ideas, brainstorm for, like, you know, short films or ideas or random things. And then I'll be like, just tell me if it's bad because sometimes I think it's a good idea and then it's, it's garbage. But um, it's called Three from Hell, right? We didn't see the actual outcome of the second movie. What do you think if – Let's say the next one starts where they get out of the car, you see them fighting or they're shooting back at the cops, whatever, and then, like as the movie slowly progresses through, things start to happen in the world where it looks like kind of Silent Hill type, where the environment starts changing, and you realize that they're actually in hell, in hell trying to escape that, or they're like they actually died, and they're like facing their demons and stuff like that because they call it through from hell. I don't know something like that where they're actually dead from that the very would be start. That's pretty cool. Honestly, I, I it, think that would be, be a trip, a, right? It'd be awesome. Um, that would be cool. And I know, because I, I, I was reading an article, like, um, I, I was trying to just figure out, I was like, how are they going to be back alive? Um, I was reading a little thing where Rob Zombie, he came up with this song that was, that was specifically for the Devil's Rejects. And he had said that in the song, um, even, even Satan doesn't uh, want them in hell. So it was kind of like an aspect of where... Uh, they're so bad that even Satan knows that they're bad and that he doesn't want them in hell at all. Um, I love that. I love that. Yeah, so that that's a pretty cool uh, a theory. I, I also really like your theory. I mean, that would be pretty cool that um, they do get out of the car and them getting out of the car, that's them entering hell and they're entering a shootout and you know they think they've won this shootout but their hell has just begun. And so, yeah, they, they start – stuff starts changing. And it's funny that you bring up that hell aspect because they are bringing in a new clown for the movie. Um, I know Captain uh, Spaulding was the original clown, which he was so amazing. Uh, he was funny yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the new clown is being played by Clint Howard. Um, if I were to show you his face, you would actually recognize him. He's come out in a lot of movies. Um, and the new clown's name is Mr. Baggy uh, Britches. Um the only thing we've gotten from this clown so far is um, a logo. Uh, other than that, we haven't gotten too much of uh, who he he will be uh, playing, or you know, as far as like you know, uh, an aspect of of what he's playing. I don't know if he's going to be teaming up with the Devil's Rejects or um, if he's just going to be a threat towards them. Um, I I want him to be. I'm sticking with my idea. Actually, I have to remember this. So if I don't post the video in the, like the next two weeks, please remind me because I was like, I want to post that theory. Because I think it'd be cool if if uh, maybe Clint Howard is kind of the uh, ringmaster of hell. So he is the clown for hell, which is uh, something I think would be pretty cool. Where he like ushers them throughout those various. Maybe they have like not challenges, but different parts of hell that they, like kind of like the what is that called? That mythology, um, not Seven Gates of Hell. What is that called? Goddamn! Oh, you're talking about Dante's Inferno. Yeah, yeah, something like Dante's Inferno where they have to go through different stages of hell and you have him be the ringmaster taking them through it. That'd be cool. So, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm excited now, like, yeah. for an idea that's not going to happen. But, um, yeah, he's creepy looking dude, Clint Howard. I just searched him up right now. He's, uh, yeah, he, he's come out in a lot of, like, small roles and stuff. He, I know he's most famous for playing, uh, usually uh, you'll see him as the role of, um, he's one of the, like, the people in, like, uh, like the the military where he he sits at the computer and watches like the nukes and stuff like that. He's he always plays that role. Um, I don't know how he gets that role every time, but he always plays it. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Another person who I thought was an interesting casting choice that they casted for Three from Hell is uh, Amelia Rivera, and he was uh, the Mayans leader on Sons of Anarchy. Um, I just thought I've actually never seen I I never seen that show. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a, if you get a chance to watch it, it's a very good show. Except like the last two seasons, it starts getting shitty. Um, okay. But it, it, it's really good up until those last. But I'd suggest to watch it all either way because it's it's still a good show. But uh, yeah, Amelia Rivera. He's he's a well pretty well known uh uh little bit of an actor too. Uh, I know he's always going to like Dodger games and stuff like that too. But uh, I just thought it was it was interesting that they casted him for Three from Hell. I don't know who he, I don't think they have announced he's who he's playing yet. Um, mm-hmm. but he is uh he took a picture with Rob Zombie, um. And Rob Zombie is the one. If you fall, uh, if you guys actually want to keep up with Three from Hell news uh, audience, and if you do too, uh, are sick, um, Rob Zombie official on Instagram. That's where I've been getting a lot of my uh, my news for uh, uh, Three from Hell. On top of that, uh, Blade Discussing will put up articles and they'll uh, elaborate on it a little bit more. So um, those are the two right. sources if you want to keep up to date with uh, Three from Hell. Oh, um, I'm yeah following them right now. Yeah. Definitely. Well, because I, I, I love Rob Zombie's music, too, so, I mean, I, I've always followed him. But, uh, yeah, that's the Three from Hell news. I mean, there's a lot of cast joining. It looks like it's going to be a pretty star-studded cast, and as time goes on, we get, like, every week it seems like we're getting uh, new cast news of who just joined or stuff like that. Either if it's going to be a cameo of some sort or they're actually in the movie for a long period of time, it's a pretty star-studded mm-hmm. cast so far, so I'm really looking forward to this movie. Definitely. Um, so moving on, uh, we're going to go to actually horror movie death and I had asked you, uh, if you wanted to come up with one and you came up with a brilliant one. Do you want to explain to the audience <laughs> of what you came up with? Yeah, absolutely. If for anybody that hasn't watched Cabin in the Woods, do yourself a favor, go watch it as soon as possible. Like literally after you finish listening to this podcast, go find it. Cause it's a love letter to horror. It's uh funny. It has great characters. It has, um, amazing moments especially at the end and at in one of these moments at the end which i don't want to spoil but i'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it where there is a breakout in that facility where all the monsters are being contained and um you see all the government facility agents being chased by all of these crazy clowns and slasher icons and a ton of stuff and then this random shot happens where um a unicorn chases this guy down the hallway and he gets stabbed and pinned against the wall. It is easily one of my favorite deaths or favorite kills in a horror movie because it's so fucking ridiculous. I love it. Yeah, but, I when you, the minute you actually brought that up, I like was thinking about that kill. I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty good solid kill. Um, <laughs> there's like a lot it's of funny. Random, it's so funny. There's so much random things going on in that shot, and then you just see that out of nowhere, and it's like out of all things that could be a horror aspect, and you freaking bring in a unicorn. That's like the most awesomest thing I've ever seen, you know, and. Uh, I thought that was that was kind of also pretty funny too. Like, there's all these monsters and stuff, and then there's a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then there's a merman as well, which I think that scene that build off like or that payoff because the the guy always wanted to see a merman. Yeah. He bets on the merman every single uh, time that they do this, and then he finally ends up dying because of the merman. It's great. So I mean, that movie is so much fun. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. Yeah, very good movie. I'll play the clip right now for you guys. <laughs> All right. Um, so moving on, they uh, so Tom Holland he actually wrote uh, Fright Night. Um, he said that they're gonna be doing some comics pretty soon. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about that because I know he did uh, Fright Night. I don't know if he did the sequel, but I know he wrote. Uh, I think he was writing a book for the third one. And I know um, he's obviously going to be involved in these comic books. I don't know who's publishing the comic books yet, but um, for sure I am definitely going to look into these Fright Night comics because I honestly am in love with the Fright Night series because Fright Night, it was it was a great classic original movie when it came out in the 80s, and then when they remade it in 2011, it was even better to me in my opinion. And um, rest in peace to uh, Anton uh, Yil. Yulich, uh, he was in. He was play. He played Charlie in the movie, and he sadly passed away a couple years ago. Um, sure, uh, I, I'm gonna take your word for it because I I'm, I'm gonna lose some of my horror cred right now. But I've actually never seen either the remake or the original. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna get shit on for that, but I'm I'm gonna check it out because of your recommendation. So hopefully um, next time I'll 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 be more more in the in the know for that. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, um, you know, obviously the original. It, I still think to this day the original with all the effects they had as far it still lives up to the um to the hype as far as uh for it but being back then a lot of the vampires that they made look pretty scary to this day um and it's got that iconic cover of like the vampire the blue background in the house and you see like the vampire on top and stuff um and then the remake with Colin Farrow as the vampire um it it was just really good the the special effects were pretty good on it a little cheesy but for the time being I mean they were pretty good um but just the story in general is great. Um, I've always loved Fright Night, and that's kind of what's inspired me lately to write the new screenplay that I'm writing about vampires. Um, I literally nice, am still nice. in early production on that, but uh, that's for another conversation. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Fright Night comics coming. I'm hoping that uh, if, if, like I said, if, if Tom Holland's doing them, I'm hoping they're going to be uh, pretty good then because he wrote the first uh, movie, and I know he, I think he wrote the second movie. I got to look into that, but um, Tom Holland is such a good writer, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, cool, move, cool. Yeah, moving on. Uh, Beetlejuice heading to the stage this October for a musical adaption for its 30th anniversary. Um, I don't know how I feel <laughs> about that. <laughs> Me neither. I was like, because I think it's, it's. I like, I really enjoy Beetlejuice. Don't get me wrong. I, uh, I actually, this is going to also like blow people's minds. I didn't see this movie until recently, I think, or maybe I saw parts of it, but my girlfriend actually showed it to me again because, uh, and I like it, but I think it could work. I'm sure Beetlejuice could work if they had an Evil Dead musical, right? So I can. <laughs> I they have an Evil it. Dead musical. They did, man. They have one in Vegas. I think it still goes on now, um, or it comes back like for the fall. And I want to check that out so badly. Like, come on, Evil Dead as a musical it sounds crazy, sounds weird. And Beetlejuice, I think, kind of will be be very similar. It's a, they actually have like a SpongeBob musical out right now that one of my friends told me about. And he that. really wants to check it out. So I'm like, I guess you could make a musical out of anything now. So. Yeah, I mean, if it works out, I guess you can. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious to see what it's going to be about, if it's going to be a new original story, if it's literally going to be the movie and just uh, they turn it into musical form. Um, I don't know, though. It's hard for me to get – it's hard for me to see another Beetlejuice. Like, Michael Keaton is such a great Beetlejuice and – it's just like I mean, even going to Universal Studios and you see the guy who does Beetlejuice, he does a really good job, but it's like, <clears> yeah. not Michael Keaton, you know. And it's like definitely not. He's he's unreplaceable. I mean, he's so so talented, and he's he's. I'm so glad to see him back in Hollywood doing a ton of movies and stuff. Yeah. You know, there's a period of time where he wasn't, but it's awesome. Yeah, most recently he just did a uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming, and he was freaking oh. phenomenal in that movie. One of the best Marvel villains. I know this is uh, not a Marvel or a superhero podcast, but my God, fantastic in that too. That podcast so. is coming soon. I can promise you that. So. Uh. Oh shit! Watch out, man. Yeah, you're gonna inspire me to do a podcast because I'm having a blast talking about all this stuff. So this is pretty cool having like a back and forth talking longer, longer form. I, I like. Yeah, I mean, kind of you're welcome fighting. back anytime, man. You have an open invitation whenever you want to be on it. So. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, next thing we're going to talk about, it's a weekly segment we do on the podcast. Uh, we didn't do a podcast last week um, due to complications with uh, uh, me and Mike. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard because I, I guess i got to really try to start finding more guests to do in the next coming weeks because I'm, I'm kind of trapped in my mom's house right now because of my injury. And George, he lives with his mom, and I usually go pick him up for the podcast, but I can't do that as of right now. So, yeah. Um, we do a weekly segment on the podcast where we talk about Crypt TV. Um, and we do this one because we love Crypt TV. We love the fact that they bring out uh, horror videos every week. They're, they're keeping the horror name alive. Uh, on top of that, it's Eli Roth. So, I mean, uh, the guy owns the, the channel. And he's a not only a fantastic director, but he's a fantastic actor. And he just all around looks like a fantastic <laughs> person to like, hang out with and stuff like that. So, uh uh, another thing we do this because uh, they actually took recognition, recognition one year or uh, one week that we did a segment on our podcast uh, that we talked about them and that really made me happy that they actually uh, took the time to actually check out our podcast and look at our segment that we did on them. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so this week on Crypt TV, the the video there's there's two weeks worth I wanted to uh, talk about. I'm only going to talk about one that that really caught my attention this week. Um, they did a, a, a video called Polaroid. Um, which was pretty, uh, pretty scary, dude. I mean, so this guy, he just moves into this apartment and, um, what had happened was he's, he's, he's in this apartment. 
he's uh he's got this old Polaroid uh, camera and he's just kind of taking pictures. Well, he starts taking a picture of like his dining room area, and uh, when he you know he takes out the picture, he 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 dries it off real quick and he looks at the picture and he sees like this shadow man. So it kind of freaks him out. So he he starts taking more pictures and the shadow man or he gets up and starts walking towards it and he gets closer and closer and then when he takes the final picture he uh he puts the camera down and then the whatever whatever it was it was like some demon it like pops up at him and like uh it like takes him and he screams and then the camera just falls on the floor and then the, the skit ends um such a solid skit um some of the best skits that they do on the channel is when a lot of the characters don't talk and then they have that build up of the monster uh getting revealed or something like that um one of the this was honestly one to go in the books because with this one um it was such a such a good uh a, a skit where it was that build up of he was taking pictures and then it, it builds up and then he finally conf, uh, comes face to face with the monster and then he ends up getting killed um they do a really good job with special effects like always they do a lot of collaborations with people they just recently did a collaboration with uh, the channel dead meat so that was really cool um but that was this week's crypt tv uh of the week um i really enjoy their content for anyone out there who's not watched crypt tv i highly suggest you guys watch it uh it's honestly i i wait till the night and i'll just binge watch all of them it's it's, it's amazing yeah that, that that show was so tense man like i i actually watched that last week as well and um because some of their some of their shorts are cheesy but this one i was expecting maybe like oh is it gonna be cheesy is it gonna be now but no that thing actually had me kind of like kind of creeped out i was like god damn i wouldn't do what that guy did you know yeah. like you know the horror movie decision where you're like let me keep taking pictures i had to run out of my house immediately but um yeah it was a good it was a good short for sure yeah so uh definitely guys go check out crypt tv if you guys have not heard of them or you know seen any of their stuff they put up amazing content they put up at least three videos every week and if they uh they get promotional offers to promote a horror movie like this last week i know they were doing a uh, a quiet place um uh, you know, promotion, which I, I really want to go see because it looks really good. Um, so go check them out. They put up new videos every week, guaranteed. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to move on to subtopics. These are topics that caught my attention but didn't make the first uh, main slate of um, of uh, topics, but they still are worth uh, giving a mention. First thing we're going to talk about, Far Cry 5. Uh, has it, it, it came out, like, I think two weeks ago three weeks ago um and there is so much horror related uh easter eggs in this game uh two of which i'm going to talk about the first one being that there's a giant uh it easter egg in there with uh a lot of red balloons uh spotted around the map um i know that they're going under investigation to try to look to see if pennywise actually comes out in the game but so far i don't okay. think no one's found him. um i still think though that's cool that they acknowledge uh uh, it with the red balloons and stuff like that because that was a major aspect in the it movie and I, I really enjoyed that Yeah, that that's I, I actually haven't played a uh, Far Cry 5. I've played the the last two the fun game. So um, uh, Yeah, there's there's horror Easter eggs. I'm, I want to check that out, too It's just there's so many things coming out, man. It's hard to stay on top of everything. I know dude Um, yeah, I definitely I'm, I'm playing it right now, and it's such a fun play right now I'm, I'm, I'm between that and Sea of Thieves, so um Nice. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah, uh, it, it's such a fun game. Uh, the second major Easter egg I want to talk about in that game is a, a Tremors Easter egg, actually. Um, so, in the game, you can go throughout uh, like houses and stuff like that, and you find phones on the table, and you can interact with them and hear uh, voice messages and stuff. Uh, one of the messages that came out uh, recently uh, was from uh, Tremors. It was one of the main characters, I think, from the first one. And they talk about um, how they're leaving and they're heading to the desert uh, in this kind of rundown area. And, and the way – the details he puts into it, it actually relates a lot to the first Tremors of where they are uh, location-wise and stuff like that. So I thought that was a little cool Easter egg to see uh, them put that into the game. Looks like these guys are uh, fanboys and stuff like that. So that's really cool of Ubisoft to do something like that. Uh, and, and I just think it's cool. I, I have – myself, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but I've never seen any of the Tremors movies. Um, oh, it's a they're they're like uh, I mean you're not missing out on like a masterpiece or anything, but I've seen actually it's weird as a kid I don't know why I like that trilogy so much. There's like five of them I think I don't know how many there are, but uh, they're they're cheesy fun movies, nothing special. But I mean I think even now you'd be able, you'd be able to enjoy it. It's like one of those one of those shitty good movies. <laughs> yeah, I get you, man. 
Um, speaking of shitty uh, movies, we're going to move on to this <laughs> shitty movie. Uh, Sharknado 6 will end the sci-fi franchise. So, uh, finally, we're coming with the Sharknado 6, and finally it's coming to an end. Thank God it's coming to an end. But, uh... I guess this one's supposed to be a time traveling one, um, and this is supposed to end the franchise once and for all. Uh, they've grown, a, they've grown a, a great cult following, though. I have to say, um, people go crazy for these movies, and I don't know why, but they just do. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have anything to add to that. I'm not gonna even like. I've never seen them. I'm never gonna see them. So, hey, all power, power to whoever enjoys it. That's, I mean, cool. I enjoy shitty movies too. Like, you know. Old school cult classic horror films that I always talk about that aren't very good, um, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. whatever. So um, that 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 should be uh, that's ending that once and for all. I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, moving on, Funko. I mean, we all know about Funko. They have those amazing Funko figures people love to collect. Um, they are launching a Freddy Krueger, Elvira, and Beetlejuice cereal. Uh, theme cereal, so that looked pretty cool. I'm, I might have to try that just to see. Um, Instant buy, dude. That's it. Unboxing video straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Unboxing and uh, review. Right. Coming soon to the that's channel. It. Um, that's it. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I thought I would just throw that out there in case anybody is a fan of Funko. Uh, they're coming out with Freddy Krueger, Elvira, Elvira, and Beetlejuice uh, theme cereals. So if you guys are fans of uh, obviously cereal and Funko, uh, go on their website and go ahead and buy them because they're coming. I don't know if they're out already or they're coming soon, but they're coming. So, uh, Colin Trevorrow will write and direct the final trilogy installment for Jurassic World. Um, don't know who this guy is, but Jurassic World has been very good lately. I'm um, really looking forward to the second one. And uh, if they're doing a trilogy and it's going to wrap it up just like uh, the Jurassic Park trilogy, I'm all for it. Um, anything with dinosaurs, honestly, I'm for that is, same here, man. I'm like a I'm like a ten year old. Uh, anything with dragons or dinosaurs, I'm in. Honestly, uh, that like I'm I'm super in. He actually wrote. Uh, um, oh, he did he did the first one. So he he did the first one. Then uh, J. A. Bayona is coming in for this next one that's coming out this year, and then he's returning to close out this trilogy. So I like the first one. I know people didn't like it very much, or they were like. Uh, you know, oh, it was too too similar to the original, or it was very you know not as good as the original. Nothing's gonna be as good as the original, you know what I mean? But I thought it was fun. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I had a, I remember going to the theater and getting goosebumps when I was hearing the freaking theme song for the first time again. Yeah, and it was it was great. But um, I'm excited to see this next one, and if they're making a, which they already announced, it's coming out. I think in twenty, I think twenty twenty, uh, the next one, um, or twenty twenty one. I will for sure go see it. Uh, Chris Pratt, honestly, is one of my favorite actors right now. So, uh, anything Chris Pratt, I'll pretty much go see. Really, <laughs> same, same here. Man. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about, uh, Shane Black. I think he's either the director or writer. Uh, he teases uh, the arrival of the Predator with a new set photo. Um, this is another movie that's kind of uh, having some issues this year. I know it got pushed back to I think September, or November, because um, I think it was scheduled for a summer release, but it got pushed back again. Um, but they have been sharing a couple set photos here and there. Um, I'm honestly looking forward to it because I love the Aliens and Predators uh, franchise, and um, I think honestly, in my opinion, the Predators are so badass and stuff like that. So, um, only time will tell with this one. Though I don't know what the story's supposed to be about. Um, hopefully, it's again the Predator just killing people. Or uh, I know the last Predator movie there was like ultra, like like predators that killed other predators and stuff like that for sport and stuff so that was a pretty cool concept I'm, I'm excited to see what they go with this one though man yeah i'm i'm so excited for this too i know they um i mean the director and the writer shane black he uh he's very talented i think a lot of his movies he's done even like some of the ones i haven't been as big of a fan of like iron man 3 he wrote and directed it um i didn't like the twist in that film but i thought overall it still was like well written it was well directed he did kiss kiss bang bang he did the nice guys so he's done a lot of really good movies so now that you know top that with more of his movies i kind of know who he is now <laughs> yeah he he doesn't do like big budget you know it's a, it's a lot of those smaller like buddy cop films and stuff he even wrote um lethal weapon as well oh the first one um i believe so yeah oh nice 
so he he has some good stuff on on his uh, IMDb and all that kind of stuff. So for me, the cast itself, I don't actually know. I'm trying to look at the cast is kind of what worries me more than than anything, just because there's not really anybody that I can see that's super big. I mean, you have Edward James Olmos on there. I know Keith um, from Keen Pills on there. I think too. Really? Okay, that's cool then. If he's on the oh yeah, he is. Keegan Keegan Michael Keel and uh Thomas Jane as well from, from the old uh Tom Punisher Jane's gonna film. be in there? Nice. Yeah, man. So I mean there's some good people actually. I didn't know. Olivia Munn's on there, she's not the best actor actress, but I'm not gonna lie. I mean of course she's pretty hot, so yeah, you know. We'll we'll take that. We'll take that. Yeah. Yep, yeah. <laughs> hopefully um, hopefully my girlfriend's not listening at this point. So <laughs> we're good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I'm just excited, dude, because uh, I like I love predators and aliens, and I just like sci-fi in general. So I'm just excited to see what this is gonna be about. Same, same, same. Uh, speaking of uh, sci-fi, fantasy, and all that, uh, CW renews Supernatural for 14th season. That now makes uh, Supernatural the longest-running show on CW. Um, that that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, I. I've watched like the first season um, or parts of it. I don't know why. Like as a big horror fan, I just never actually sat down. For me, TV shows or anything that's like long term, it's hard for me to commit to just because there's so much, like I mentioned, out there. So it's like it's hard for me to watch it. But I, I hear the show's actually gotten even better as of the last couple of seasons. And there's a Scooby Doo spinoff coming up, which is dope. So yeah, um, um, yeah. I've been. I I I'm pretty much where i'm at right now i'm just waiting for the uh, 14th season to finish because they did sign a deal with netflix where like after all their cw shows and like two weeks later they end up on netflix so i'm honestly just waiting That's on cool. that um but yeah i guess they just aired the uh, scooby-doo um crossover event it was a big deal because for the longest people have uh wanted this even uh the guy the actor who plays dean uh, jensen ackles has been suggesting this for a long time and they finally came out with it it's more of a I think it's more of a. He was saying it's more of like a like a a, a PG fourteen thirteen kind of version of Scooby Doo. So that's, <laughs> that's what makes awesome. It even, I want I want to check that out. Yeah, I mean it looks good. Um, I'm excited to to watch this season. I know with the, I started watching this season like I think I got like five or six episodes in, but uh, this season so far, uh, what they're going uh, as far as the story wise is, is such a good uh, thing. They have not done this uh, what they're doing right now. Uh, yet so this is the first time they're actually doing something like this and i, I really think it's going to be uh, uh, uh cool and i don't know how it's going to end with the season if they're going to keep that character on but um when it comes around i, I definitely will have to to see what goes on so i'm i'm, I'm excited so yeah yeah um next thing we we'll talk about nick cage wants to uh says he wants a marvel he wants marvel to release an, a scary r-rated ghost rider movie even if he's not in it so that's pretty cool that Nick Cage, even though uh, he knows that he's probably never going to come back as Ghost Rider. <laughs> um, never. Never, never, never. But, yeah, I think that's dope. Yeah, he still wants them to make a scary R-rated one. And I think that's true because I think Ghost Rider should be scary and R-rated because he's pretty much a, he's the devil's uh, – it's the spirit of vengeance. He's a demon. So. Um, yeah, I think Marvel uh, – like we were talking about, you know, superhero movies with, uh, with horror in it. I think if Marvel's next step – Right after Avengers: Infinity War and Infinity War Part Two, um, they can introduce Ghost Rider. They can introduce Blade again. They can introduce some of those other smaller or, or less uh, less known horror characters that I don't even really know. But if you have that universe of horror based Marvel ones, then we know we're going to get a good product because it's Disney. You know what I mean? Like they're they're killing it. So yeah, I'm down. Um, I know they introduced uh, Ghost Rider on Agents of Shield, uh, and it was the uh... The uh, Mexican Ghost Rider, who uh, he's still he's really badass. I, I do personally, my favorite Ghost Rider is Johnny Blaze, but um, this one is probably my second favorite because uh, I like his car for one, and uh, I think his just outfit's pretty badass as well. Um, and I think that's the one they're running with right now in the comic book series. So uh, only time will tell. I hope they give, if not a movie, uh, I hope his own Netflix series because that's what a lot of people really want to. Same thing with Blade, his own Netflix series, and that's what it looks like. Their Marvel's doing is. Uh, giving all like the darker characters um a more of a netflix series so they can go because if you really think about the netflix series those are pretty much rated r they just they're tvma and that's basically the version of tv's version of rated r so um yeah that's a pretty cool universe too i I love the netflix universe so um hopefully we get to see a ghostwriter film again though on the big screen um i'm really hoping for it 
Yeah, same here. Even Netflix, I'll take it. Whatever they put, I'll take it. If it's Marvel, I, I know we're in good hands, so it's all good. Yeah. Oh. Um, next thing we're going to talk about, this was kind of funny this week. Uh, the Simpsons parodied It and the Scary Crown, uh, Clown Craze. Um, their version of It was just so funny. Anything the Simpsons do, does is, is, is funny. The, those guys have been on the air for like 20 plus years. And for some reason, people each week tune in to watch their new episodes. And they still keep going. So I think that's that's fantastic. Um, but yeah, they did recently just parody It and, uh, the, of course, the, the Scary Clown Craze. I know that... Uh, last year or like two years ago that there was a whole big old thing of uh, you know all the clowns popping up everywhere and people recording them and shit so um, <laughs> I just thought it was funny that the Simpsons finally took a, a jab at that and you know kind of just parodied it because uh, you know the Simpsons are great um, you still do you watch the Simpsons or not really not anymore I want I, I mean I would want to I just like I said man I I'm not up to date with pretty much anything unless it's, it's movies because right now I have like the movie pass so I'll check out most new releases but anything on tv or anything on netflix like i don't even have a netflix account like these past couple of months because uh i've been so busy but but i love the simpsons that was the show i grew up with and and treehouse of horrors was amazing i still want to see a scare zone of that here here at horror nights but um yeah no i want to i want to check it out like i love i i don't know is it still good it's still good overall it's all right, yeah. I mean, it, it's still it's still funny, you know. They got their moments and stuff like that. I watch it every now and then. Like, I, I'm not like religiously watching it, but I'll watch it every now and then. So, okay, cool, cool. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about uh, the new Netflix uh, date for Blumhouse's Family Blood has been released, and it is coming out on, ironically, May fourth, twenty eighteen, May the fourth. Um, I know Blumhouse was in in the works of a of a new uh, Netflix exclusive. Um, movie and it's supposed to be about vampires so i'm v- I'm very much looking forward to that especially now because i'm writing the new vampire thing that can probably come for some inspiration to see where to go um but yeah I'm, I'm really excited to see what blumhouse blumhouse lately has been on a roll so i'm excited to see what this uh family bloods is supposed to be about yeah especially vampires because i'm not the biggest vampire dude but like there's a handful that i really enjoy like uh, what we do in the shadows i don't know if you've ever seen that comedy uh, comedy horror film no, um, it's good. If you guys haven't watch it, it's one of my favorite. It's kind of like Cabin in the Woods. It's like a love letter to vampire horror films, but it's funny and it's it's so good. So check that out. It's the director of Thor Ragnarok as well. So he did that movie. Oh, nice. Um, okay. So that put on your radar, but um, I'm not the biggest fan of vampires generally because I feel like they're a little cliche. You know what I mean? But yeah. with Blumhouse behind it, um, I think they can probably introduce something new and bring bring uh, fresh ideas. So I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, it should be good. Uh, moving on now, American Horror Story season eight is rumored to be set in 2032, and Joan Collins has joined the cast as well. So um, I, I know there's been a lot of rumor lately of what this next season is supposed to be about. A lot of people are saying it's supposed to be like post-apocalyptic in the future and stuff like that. Um, that's like the biggest rumor out there right now. Um, I know American Horror Story is very secretive about. Uh, their season up until they actually uh, show that first episode of the season. Um, even the little teasers they give out leading up to that for the first episode, they're always so secretive about it. So uh, only time will tell with American Horror Story, really. Yeah, I'm just uh, Horror Story. I'm so iffy on now. I don't want people to hate me because I uh, I know there's fans out there. Even uh, I don't know. I mean, the show hasn't been very good to me uh, recently. I haven't seen Cold, so I can't speak about that. But um, it's just so inconsistent for me. So I, I hope this season does better because I, I always watch them. Like, for the most part, I'll still catch up on it because I, I want to stick with horror shows and give give them that, that view, uh, the viewership. But we'll, we'll see. how ch- well, Kind of just sitting here. There's, like, a little pattern I've noticed with American Horror Story lately is that um... – all the odd seasons, uh, honestly, have been really good, and all the even seasons have been pretty shitty. I mean, that's how, how dare I'm you? Doing. How dare you? Asylum season two? I love Asylum. Some people now, okay. don't like Asylum. So Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I can't really talk for Asylum and Coven because those are the only, literally, two seasons I've never seen. Oh man, come on! Watch Asylum. Let me know what you think of it because I some people don't like it, some people love it. That's my favorite season of all time. So check it out. Yeah, but I, I agree with you. The overall pattern does seem to be that way. For sure. Yeah, I think the three favorite seasons I have so far are uh, Murder House, uh, Hotel, and Colt. Because they were honestly some of the best seasons that I've enjoyed so far. Um, so yeah, let's hope that uh, we get that uh, Season 8 announcement pretty soon. 
Uh, let's go move on. Uh, the Walking Dead Season 8 finale promised to be epic and probably a little too big. So I know a lot of people have not been watching Walking Dead as of late. Uh, I still watch it because I love Negan, but um, I, I, I'm i still into it, honestly. I, I think this season's doing really good, and I, I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, do you watch it, or have you stopped watching it? Sorry, hold on one second. Uh, can you Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Sorry if the quality gets a little worse because my uh, I shouldn't have used wireless earphones and it died now, and I don't have wired ones right now. So, um, but yeah, I don't I don't watch I don't watch it anymore. I, I basically ended at the end of last season, so I saw the last season, and I just I felt like it was getting. It was getting repetitive, and and I'm a huge. I started with the show, so I'm kind of bummed. I might catch up. I have it all DVR'd, but I haven't watched season uh, season eight at all. Yeah, it's really good so far. I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, when you get a chance, watch it. Uh, I I want to see what they're gonna do this end of the season. I know they're they're really promoting right now uh, that season eight uh, finale and the season four f- uh, premiere of uh, Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead are gonna be screening in theaters, commercial free. So I think that's pretty cool. They're making a really big deal about this because uh, I don't think they've ever done that before. Uh, so we should, uh, we'll see if it, uh, if it's as big as they promise. I'm, I'm assuming someone big is gonna die. Usually someone big always dies every end of the season. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, the pilot episode for the Purge TV series lands American Horror Story director. So um, if you don't know by now, they're making a Purge TV series. Uh, I don't know what it's gonna be really based off uh, i had read some stuff that it's supposed to be like a purge cult that's obsessed with the purge and stuff like that so um this should be interesting because i know the purge is usually one night and to make a whole series out of it um i'm kind of i'm kind of skeptical to see where this is gonna land yeah i was hearing that they were actually gonna and i don't know if people are gonna like that if it's true but the the writer the showrunner was saying that it was gonna basically build up to that night so you're actually following a few different characters and kind of seeing their mindset, their mentality as to why they're going to decide to do the purge. So it's more of a build up to the purge, and then I'm assuming the final couple of episodes will actually be that. So I think it's going to be like a half and half, where it's just like a character drama and horror TV show. So I'm interested. I'm uh, and the director of American Horror Story. I think, well, one of the directors. I'm sure there's a few from American Horror Story. Uh, those shows look beautiful all the time. I, I would say that that their directing is always top notch, even if the writing's not the best. So I'm excited for that. And they released the trailer for the first Purge today. So if you haven't seen that, uh, check yeah. it out. Yeah, and then uh, I know you're gonna have to probably leave right now. So I'm gonna wrap actually wrap that up with uh, we're gonna talk about that for um, for uh, the last thing before you leave here. Um, the first purge, man, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty promising. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Have you seen the trailer for it, obviously? Yeah, yeah, I saw it like right before we we started talking. Um it's you know what surprised me too cuz I was originally thinking you know how in the last movie it ended and there was that um that uprising so you saw you saw people starting to rebel against the purge? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, "Oh, that's fascinating." You know, like all this political stuff going on now, right? People not being happy with politics, understandably so. This shit's going going down every week. You see something on the news. Um, so I was like, that that'd be a great way of tying things in. And then they they turn it around, and as they're like, it's a prequel, and which is great. I think the trailer is great. I wanted to see Frank Grillo a little bit more. I thought the second and third Purge movie was so much fun. Um, but I love how they introduced that that piece where people from the government. Are planting those those people in the perch to get people ex- like actually involved? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I thought that was a fantastic uh, uh, position to do this too because um, you're seeing how corrupt the government is and how much they really want this purge thing to work, and then they they're putting their own uh, U.S. military forces out there disguised as civilians to actually start people doing because it looks like people are not interested into the purge as much as they thought they would. And for them to plant uh, like uh, U.S. Uh, military out there to start uh, rallying up people to do it, uh, it's going to be an interesting story. I know Marissa Tomei; she's one of the main characters in there. She's actually uh, going to be playing the lady who's trying to encourage people to do it. Who uh, one of the minds behind uh, starting the purge and stuff like that? She has a pretty major role in this movie. So it's a, it's a Spider-Man sequel. Aunt May; she's working for the government now. So there it goes. 
Uh, no, yeah, that, I think that's genius, and it kind of makes the whole Purge, like, this movie and that premise solidifies the Purge premise so much more, because I know a lot of people are like, the Purge isn't realistic, how, why would people decide to do this, like, it doesn't make any sense, maybe there's a handful of people, but how is it so popular, and now you know that, let's say even the second, third movie, maybe the majority of those characters aren't, like, you know, actually wanting to do it, and it, it still is people from the government, and they're just out there doing their political stuff where they're killing the people they want to kill. Like, it's very, very smart. And, I mean, this makes the whole franchise, which I think is already very solid, even better. So I'm I'm beyond excited for this. Like, so excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. It should be good. It's coming out July 4th. And, uh, of course, I'll go see it. Um, I watched all the other uh, three movies, and I've enjoyed them. So uh, only time will tell. All right, Mr. Arsic, I know you uh, have to dip out on us uh you have to of course uh do uh stuff that uh of course all of us adults do which is work um <laughs> the unfortunate dude if i could talk if i could talk with you for another hour an hour and a half and cover some more stuff i would have loved to so my, my bad for you know it's work you know work as you know no yeah don't worry man it's, it's responsibilities first and then you know bullshit after so i i completely understand if i had to work i i i, I would do the same thing man I, I completely understand um i just want to thank you real quick though for being on the podcast like i said you're welcome back anytime hopefully we can get a podcast going with like you me and the the league pretty soon uh that'd be pretty cool um, yeah, uh, that'd be fa that'd be amazing. I'd love to talk with all you guys. And and once again, man, thanks so much for having me on here. And and keep up the good work, because like I said, I see a lot of channels like this. Because I stay on top of it now, and I see like what channels are posting, and like, oh, okay, who's who's doing what? Like, how's this community growing and all that stuff? And I I really enjoy your stuff. So keep up the good work, and I'm excited to see how your channel like just jumps up this year especially with uh with all these announcements coming up so oh man thank you Pre i appreciate it so much yeah you too man keep up the good work i'm you know i'm tuning in uh every week when you put up something new um uh, so yeah man uh thanks for, like i said thanks for being on the podcast and like i said you're welcome back anytime uh so you just have a good one man all right you too you too All right, guys, so that was uh, the interview with Awkward Arsic, and he is such an amazing uh, person. Uh, he, uh, I, I pitched him back a while back ago uh, to be on the podcast, and he said, <laughs> like he said in the beginning, I don't know if I want to be on it. I'm, pr I'm pretty weird and stuff, but he honestly is a really cool guy. You just uh, heard me talk to him and stuff like that. He's a really down-to-earth guy. And uh, I'm really glad he. Uh, when I put up the league um, podcast, he, he he messaged me saying if he, if if I was still interested in having it on the podcast, I said of course because I would not pass up an opportunity collaborating with another channel. So yeah, we're gonna end the show like we do every week though with uh, this week in YouTube and this week in YouTube we have a we have a lot of um, a lot of channel uh, a lot of our channels put up some videos. Um, so this week in YouTube, we're gonna start with the League of Extraordinary Vloggers. They put up a Stranger Things maze at HHN 2018. Uh, Josue pretty much breaks down uh, what's gonna uh, be a um, of what's gonna be at the event this year, uh, just like a lot of us did this week. Um, and they announced Stranger Things. So go check out their uh, video to see of their opinions of what they thought. Of course, my uh, guest, uh, my guest this week on the podcast, um, Awkward Arsic. He had a, a pretty good lineup of videos this week. He did the HHN 2018 Twitter roundup of March. He uh, he basically takes up all the tweets of uh, the month uh, from uh, Horror Nights John Murdy, and he makes a video of the most important and then breaks them down for you guys and stuff like that. So go check out that video as well as his HHN 2018 Stranger Things Maze announcement and his classic Monsters Maze coming to HHN 2018. He has a valid reason of why that maze might be coming to uh, the event this year, and I, I strongly agree with him. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, SoCal Exploring coming out with a couple of videos this week. Um, he came out with the Stranger Things officially announced for HHN 2018, uh, the pros and cons of Stranger Things coming to HHN 2018, and the potential of Frozen Land coming to California Adventure. So go check out uh, SoCal Exploring, not only for your... Um, for your horror needs, but also for your theme park needs. He's, he's a really good, uh, trustworthy source, and I enjoy watching his videos each and every week. Um, Crypt TV came out with a lot of content this week. Uh, Polaroid was last week, but I just featured it as uh, this week on YouTube because it was one of my favorites, and I wanted to talk about it. So go check out Polaroid. Uh, Truth or Dare, Would You Rather. Truth or Dare is a Blumhouse movie coming out um, pretty soon, and they've been advertising it a lot, so check that out. Uh, another horror, a short horror film, uh, Bad Krampus. Uh, a Quiet Place Quiz. 
um, because A Quiet Place came out this week as of this recording, so go check that out. Uh, They sponsored A Quiet Place trailer, uh, Meow, another short horror film, uh, A Quiet Place deep dive, uh, Fright Hype, Scary Truth or Dare Cake Balls, and Founders Day Season 1 Supercut. So uh, go check out all those amazing videos from Crypt TV. They put up amazing content each and every week, and it's amazing. Zombie Chris. Uh, Zombie Chris also had put up a lot of great content this week. Uh, first and foremost, he put up HHN 2018 leaked lineup. So he has he covers a lot of the Florida aspects of um, uh, HHN. So that's our number one source for everything Florida. We look at Zombie Chris, and he has his own leaked lineup uh, in there. So go check out his video, the leaked lineup video. Um, HSN 2018 speculation number two. Uh, he speculates what's coming to the Orlando event, so definitely go check that out. Uh, his Stranger Things maze announcement video coming to HSN uh, 28 or 2018 at uh, Orlando. The Titan 2018 Netflix review and the first Purge trailer reaction. Uh, definitely go check all of those videos out. He makes amazing content and uh, works very hard on it, and I really uh, dig watching his videos every week. Uh, vi- a channel we li- we added on uh, the last time was. Um, uh, second star, uh, Thomas from the League of Extraordinary Vloggers does a, a Disney channel that mixes the amazing wonders of Disney with the artistic uh, styles of jazz. Um, and they, he came out with a couple videos uh, this week. Uh, first and foremost, the pros and cons of Marvel Land coming to Disneyland California Adventure. If you guys want to know more about that, go check out the second star. He has a pretty good pros and cons list. Um, and then what do parents die well, why do parents die in Disney's films? Uh, that's an interesting video because I've always wondered the same thing myself. Definitely go check out um, uh, Second Star if you are a fan of the League of Extraordinary Vloggers and of Thomas. Uh, another person I'm going to talk about is Art Dracula. Um, he is a scare actor at, at Not Scary Farm, but he makes uh, amazing content. And uh, this last week, um, he put up two videos. Hang Time, Knott's Berry Farm Ride Footage, and Knott's Berry Farm Boys and Berry Festival 2018. Definitely go check out those uh, videos if you're a fan of Art Dracula like I am. I think he's such a good uh, content guy, and he puts up a lot of funny videos during his time at Knott's Scary Farm. Uh, HHN Fanboy, uh, he announced, uh, of course, an HHN maze announcement, Stranger Things maze. So definitely go check out what his opinions are on um, you know, the new maze. Uh, a lot of people put out that video this week, and honestly, it's, it's such a very good... Um, a video and uh, just overall um, a lot of us fans are, are uh, very excited for it that's going to do it for this week in YouTube I'm, I'm um, thanks for listening to the podcast I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I had Awkward Artistic on the show this week um, he was such a such a very down earth guy like I said and I'm looking forward to collaborating him in the, with him in the future um, but uh, thanks for watching the Mindless Horror Podcast um I don't know if we're going to do one next week. I will let you know, guys, on Twitter or uh, Instagram. So follow me at um, the Knights of Four or at Knights of Four. Uh, but thanks, guys, for watching, and I will see you guys hopefully soon.